All right, y'all. So we have something interesting here, man. So I've been hearing some mixed reviews about this interview. Randy Chavez, I believe, found some positives in it. Um, obviously, that, that's what he tends to do. Then you have people in the community who's questioning if David Yu was drunk or hungover during this interview. And some just thinks maybe he's nervous because of all the stuff that's going on and all the pressure. And then he doesn't do stuff like this where he's answering heavy hitting questions like this. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just, I wanted to get my own opinion on this and see some of the things that I saw. Maybe some of the things that I, um, yeah, like some of the things that, that I'm noticing. So that being said, y'all, we're going to jump into it. She actually jumps straight into the BitForex thing and, and she does it with class. So let's, let's check out David's response. Let's see what he has to say about the situation, man. Incident that has shut down unexpectedly with uh, what I learned, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, approximately 7% of the OMI supply. And the mm, only yeah. reason I'm bringing this up, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because it's an elephant in the room and I want to get the elephant out of the room and we get on with our conversation. And I think, you know, when Andrew and I talked about it, it's our responsib it is our responsibility to all of you and to the community to address this. And because we, I feel bad for OMI holders, especially because they've been on this exchange for five years and now this happens. So David, I, I want to give you the opportunity uh, just to address your community in your own words and what, you know, what this means for them and then we can get on with our first topic. Yeah, thank you. Um, so when I first learned um, about the Biforex uh, issue, obviously I was, uh, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and and few, few of the ma major side, as you have mentioned, a lot of our key supporters in OMI, ECOMI behind it, um, have assets on it. Um, you know, we constantly try to address these issues to get users to keep, keep it on their own cold storage wallet or devices. Um, we have attempt to reach out to the exchange uh, for please explain. We have sent them mails. Um, we have very limited responses uh, because some of them are ex-employees or ex-employee or CEO of the firm. Um, that's crazy. Like that, that statement right there was crazy. So the people that they have contact with are no longer there it's either the ex-employees or it's the ex-ceo and the ceo just left after years abruptly so like that sounds sketch to me they can't even get in contact with people who they trusted to get them in that project because all of the people that were trusted is gone that they've been gone how long have they been gone how long have you all been out of contact with this exchange like how, like what is that relationship like where you have no communications with them? You have an entire crypto department, right? So why is, and this is, this is why David don't come on streams with someone like me. I'm going to ask difficult questions that needs answers, but I wouldn't even want to grill David like this, but someone like the problem is I don't believe there's anyone on the Vivi and Ecomi team that can answer these questions. That is, that is my issue with the team. That that's, that's, that's my whole issue. There should be someone, you all should have this information and you all should be able to communicate this information. You should. Like, even if you can't tell specifics about your strategy and some of the things that you're doing, general things should be able to be answered. I think once we get clear communication from the exchange, we'll find an appropriate forum to address these to our users. Uh, but, you know, at, at this moment, uh, one one of the great thing about our communities is that they all come together uh, and, and please be vigilant in everything. Uh, just very unfortunate this has happened again over and over with m many of these exchanges going down. Um, so, I mean, it, it's unfortunate that as a company, you all seem to have the 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 most famous and powerful brands in human history all under one umbrella, yet when it comes down to exchanges, you put us on these like weird little household, like bro, some, some random kid in his house setting these up. Like, it's like, why, why would you take 
so, uh, something associated with the caliber of Disney and put it on something as insignificant. It's okay if you start there because it was a different landscape in crypto, what, five years ago or whatever. It was a different landscape, so fair enough. It wasn't that many options back then, but there are real heavy hidden exchanges out right now. There's real exchanges with a lot more trust. Like there, there's, there, and to be fair, no exchange is exempt, but if it's an FTX or something like that, I believe that's a lot more understandable. Like if it's foul play, then it's foul play. You can't prepare for that. But Bitforex, that that could be prepared for. Like, I mean, we've always known that that was a risk. I mean, especially from the, when it comes down to the influencers, that's why so many of us say in the videos, oh, keep control of your wife. Hey, I've never trusted Bitforex. I've never had, any, I, I, I've not left my money on it for a second because I've always felt like uh, to that the entire time. Now, I mean, after a while, people get comfortable and comfortable, but it's like, nah, I just can't get a level of comfort with something like that. And, and yeah, a lot of this stuff, could have been avoided if they actually just did a better job. If they did a better job. And then if you're not going to do a better job, stress the importance. Like you have a whole crypto department is what you're saying. Stress the importance to your audience of protecting their assets. Give them solutions. Tell them what cold storage wallets to buy. You used to have your own cold storage wallet. Where are they? It's crazy. And it seems like they they don't appear to care about their fans. Like they say it, but maybe in person, the vibe is different, the vibe is there. But a lot of things that this company does screws the investors and screws the people who believe in this company. They just keep believing though. And that says a lot about the caliber and character behind the people that they attract, which means they attract good people. But I mean, you can't be this much of a fuck up if you're going to keep attracting good people because good people have their limits. Please stay tuned. When we have more update, we'll address them to the audience. Thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. I don't know, Will, if you have anything to add to that. I know this is... So, I mean, just, just from that response, David said nothing. I mean... Sounds about right. We reached out. We tried to we tried to hit them up. They ducked our calls. So we'll tell you something if they call us back. Don't expect a call back. I'm just saying, like this is what I'm telling the community. Don't expect a call back. <laughs> I'm just listen. I said it in my video yesterday. I'll say it again. Assume the worst. Assume the worst and move as if the worst has already happened. And then be surprised if something good comes of this. The best thing you can do right now, like just take that to the chin. And then, and then if you realize, oh snap, it's not what we thought it was, then that's, that's actually, it makes you happy. But moving as if something hopeful is about to happen right now, and then later on you get smacked with the reality, bro, get smacked with that reality right now. Take, rip the bandaid off, deal with it. You, you holding that L, just, like just get that through your mind. That's what I would do personally. Like, I feel for everybody, for sure. But what I would do is put it in my mind right now. I just got my ass whooped. It, I, can, I can only build back up from here, you know? Like, and then if something good happens, amazing, blessing. Something that, you know, we keep reliving. So as, you know, yeah. uh, another CEO, if you have any feedback on that. Well, no, I, I think, you know, David summarized it, uh, you know, quite effectively there, um, you know, dealing in Web3, these are new uh, uncharted waters that we're exploring together. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's difficult to kind of traverse all these things in, in, the, in, in the correct way 100% of the time. Uh, I have deep empathy for the situation. You know, I'm a trader. Also, also by the way, a, a lot of folks know I'm a VV collector. I love uh, using the app. I collect VV digital collectibles, and I think very highly of David, the team, and the product. Uh, so I have major empathy for the community. It feels like we're all one community. And when something like this happens, it's not a VV issue. It's a community-wide issue. It's a Web3-wide issue. Um, so we'll learn and get better. Um, you know, getting to know David over the past few months, I could just say. See, they need a speaker like him at VV. <laughs> like this is what they need. Like you see how he just he just gave us a a a, a, a amazing bullshit sandwich. 
Like, see, I like this. Like, and he's saying some things, but at, at the end of the day, like, with the amount of mistakes that he, somebody like me, I, I'm still not letting that slide, but the way he presents that with confidence, it's like, that's what's been lost with VV, man. It's like, it's like they know they're getting their ass whooped at this point, bro. It's like, look at David's response versus his. Like, and I know it's a stressful situation right now, and David is in the heat of the moment, and it's like this this topic probably he didn't think. I mean, I mean, he had to know he would be hit with this question. But I'm just saying, bro, like, this is how you serve a proper bullshit sandwich. Now, I would still break down the fact that, yo, I mean, the Web3 space, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Bro, Coinbase exists now. Why aren't we on there? Binance exists. There, there's there's trusted exchanges that exist now. Like, yeah, some years ago when the Omi token first got listed, some it wasn't the same. But come on now. Like, you have no excuse. Like, and then you have a whole... Vivi or Ecomi is one of the, the main companies out here claiming they have a whole crypto department. What the hell is your department doing? Y'all would be fired if this happened. If you, you work for my company and something like this blindsided me, you're done. What are you doing? What am I paying you for? If that department even exists. Like, what are you getting paid for? You, your job is to make sure nothing goes wrong with the token. 7% is gone? That's 100% of your ass out that door. Simple. Very simple. Say he's incredibly high integrity guy. He cares deeply about his community. Um, and we're all just trying to do the best every single day to, to push forward and build together. So. See, and that's what I would call bullshit too, because you're not doing the best. If you can't get a communicator to actually explain to the community, keep the community calm, let people know something, you're not doing your best. What they're doing is half ass and they're trying to be secretive. They really don't know what they're doing and they're trying to figure things out and they just can't come out and say that. But because they're not coming out and saying that the community keeps finding themselves in fucked up positions because they won't just communicate and let people know what's real. You moving in a way that you're doing, trying to be all secretive and, and blaming everything on NDAs, you're fucking your users. That's what you're doing. You're putting people in these bad positions that's hurting them. Sometimes the truth is the, the best option. You have to protect your users just as much as you have to protect your IP. And with the decisions that y'all have been making, you're not protecting no one. You're not protecting no one. No one is safe because of what you all are doing. So, yeah. So I think David summarized it perfectly. Thank you for that. And you know, my job as a Web3 journalist is always to humanize the beat or the topic. And uh, you know, this, this actually really works out well because we're dealing with a real scenario here. And, I, and ironically, the topic is choosing the best business structure in this space. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, I, we chose, I chose this. I mean, she's talking to a guy. All right, let me stop. I ain't gonna troll. Let me, let me stop trolling. This is a serious situation. <laughs> Talk about the best business structure where my mans can't even structure proper exchanges. It's crazy, though. Topic a while back, by the way, so there's no coincidence here. So I wanted to... And I mean, how long is the... That's not his area excuse going to work. How long is that going to go for? How long can we accept that that's not your area excuse? It's been how many years? And you said you got a whole team where that's that whole team's area. Like... Even if it's not on him, because he said they've hired like out and stuff like that. Even if it's not on him, it's on somebody. So who's like who who's at fault here? Who's to blame? What's going on? What went wrong? Like, we need answers. Like, I think the community deserves answers because people have taken some serious losses. I heard Pags, Mr. Pags, had like what, 30 grand or something on on BitForex. I would be pissed. I would be pissed. I'm just saying, and, and I'm pretty sure some people had more, some people had less, but I mean, everybody ain't where PAGS is, so so even less could be a, everything someone has or a, a huge chunk of what someone has, not everything, because hopefully no one's out here investing with their rent money, but it's, it still hurts. It hurts, like if, if all you had is $500 to invest and you lose the whole 500, it don't matter that it's only 500, like that, that hit, that hit hard, so. Yeah, but we're going to end it here. This is where um, the end of David talking about Bitforex is, I guess. So, yeah, let me know what you all think in the comment section down below and how y'all feel, man. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, fam.